Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we have a special guest. This is my cousin slash best friend, Austin. You probably heard me mention him a couple times on the channel. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Camillus Carnivore. The, actually we've got a bunch of knives here today. We've got the Carnivore X. The Carnivore XZ, little tiny one. And we have a, uh, doesn't even have a brand name. Yeah, Walmart brand. Some knockoff version of a uh, carnivore. So, yeah. Before we get started with anything, pocket check. Best Tech Grampus for me. What did you say this one was? It's a Benchmade Bug Out. The Benchmade Bug Out, just normal Benchmade Bug Out. All right. So. On to the main attraction. What I remember most about these knives is we used to want them all the time as teenagers. Yes. And my mom would never let me get one. <laughs> and he had two of them. Yep. You got that one first, right? Yes, I got I got the little one first. It was the first one that came out. Just a little old carnivore XZ, you know. Nothing. Just just a little one. When first came out. Well, I remember seeing these in Walmart. They hang up on the shelf, and I just thought they had the coolest blade. It was always so, so jealous of yours, and then you went and got the other one. Yep. <laughs> and I I never got one because my mom was like, you can't have one. And then I kind of forgot about it for a couple of years, went off to college and everything, and then just a couple months ago, I uh, saw it in Walmart again. I was like, you know what? My mom can't tell me what to do. So I bought one. And as you can see, mine's pretty dirty, and we'll talk about why here in a little bit. Yeah, this is a version of a clean one. That's what it looks like when it's nice and shiny. So I guess before we do anything else, we we'll probably get some sizes out of the way. I don't know the exact blade length. I'll leave it on the screen. <laughs> For size comparison, I have the Cold Steel SRK. Here's against the, uh, get them all both on screen. There's the big one. And then we got the little one. The smaller one. Ah, nailed it. And then, I guess just for the heck of it, here's a rat one because everyone knows a rat one. You have to use a rat one for every size comparison. That's true. Knife YouTube tip number one. So, I guess what we should do now is grab my handy dandy backpack of goodies. Test some sharpness. So, I don't think we'll test the sharpness with mine because mine's obviously been uh, <laughs> compromised, <laughs> abused. Before this all happened, the only thing I used it for, though, was slicing up some old jack lanterns after Halloween to feed to the goats. So we'll leave him there for now. And we'll tear out a page of good old National Geographic. Maybe. Possibly. I'll let you do sharpness. Let's see. Not too bad. Well, I'd say for a machete. Yeah, for a machete. That's actually pretty good. I mean, if, um, especially since it's an impact cutter. Yeah, it, it's not made to be precision sharp. Yeah. But I mean, for a big knife, they don't do too bad. And obviously, yeah, these things are not going to be razor blades. Just the other one. Now oh, for the big carnivore X. You know, that one's actually sharpened a lot better than the little one. That's true. The little one is also a little older. The little one is older too, yeah. As far as I could tell, I, th these don't have any blade steel markings, but as far as I could tell, just looking it up, I think these are. They said they're a 440 series stainless. Yes, 440. And i not sure what kind. If it's 440A, you know, it's a little bit eh. If it's 440C, that can be all right. And as for the, the knockoff, they're, <laughs> I, I doubt they even know what steel it is. CPM LOL. Yeah, exactly. A giant wombat. We'll cut up the giant wombat. Should put up the lead on the next page. 
All right, let's see how sharp this guy is. I've got two pieces of paper there, but uh, it would be better if it wasn't halfway serrated. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This one has the serrations here, so. I mean, eh? <laughs> one thing we got to talk about is the secondary knives. We can test the sharpness on those too. They come on both newer and older models. Is the older one the same little knife? Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah, here's what the little knife looks like. Um, they show on the, the box, I, I remember seeing them, you know, strapping this onto a pole, just a little tiny utility knife. Yeah, they're all the same. They're all the same. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of wind, so it's a little bit harder to tell, but not like the best sharpening, but I imagine it won't be very hard to sharpen these up. Also, a cool part on the newer or the older, smaller ones is if you want, you could take off the little knife and wear it separately. Yeah. So you could do with the small one. The bigger one, you can. Yeah, the bigger one is part of the sheath here, and it actually has a little magnet inside to keep it in there. Kind of a weak magnet, but... Yeah, it's not a very strong magnet. Yeah. I guess now's a good time to talk about the sheaths themselves. So they're a, a hard plastic... They're not Kydex, and they're not like a, you know, Securex, like in the, like the Cold Steel had. And so they don't stay in, but they have double retention, so you can cross that over, and that goes there. And for the older one, it's just a simple nylon, just a, just a simple nylon sheath with like a, kind of like a hard insert, just kind of protect it from cutting the outside. And it just has the one clasp there to keep it in. And then for the little knife, it has a little Velcro strap that kind of holds it all together. Otherwise, it's, it's all right. Like you said, it doesn't really keep them in very well. I mean, this one just kind of doesn't stay in. You have to really make sure it's buttoned, otherwise it'll fall out. Something I wish um, came on the bigger ones, you can add one, as you can see they have holes all around here you can attach i don't know if this is molly, molly compatible or if it'd be compatible with like tech lock but i kind of wish it came with a leg strap you know that would be that would leg. be very yeah. nice because otherwise I like, mean, <laughs> you could probably knock someone out with the sheath just blast it that's true that's true but yeah so as far as the the ergos go the handle isn't Completely neutral, but I think it's neutral enough. And on the big one, I mean, I've got smaller hands than you, so <laughs> I'm quite a ways back, but it's not uncomfortable. It's not the most comfortable. Yeah, and if you look at the size comparisons from, like, the big one, obviously you can tell that it's a little smaller, but it's also thinner this way Yeah. than it is on the big one. Yeah. And is this one, yeah, this handles more just kind of a plastic grip. And yeah, this, one this one's more plastic. A little bit of a rubberized texture. This was kind of like them first designing the carnivore yeah i guess so so they were just kind of working out kinks then they perfected it with the x so i guess now we should talk about why this one's so gosh darn dirty okay so austin reminded me that we uh have been neglecting this guy so um i guess here you hold that i'll talk about the sheath <laughs> so the, i think i picked that guy up for 10 bucks so the sheath not good nylon sheath at all in fact yeah, that, that's the part where the blade comes out and it's it's open. So yeah, that's not something I love. And uh, going into like the ergonomics of like the handle, I'm left-handed, so I use my my knives are mostly fitted for left-handed. So like he's left-handed, so his are obviously fitted for right-handed. Right -handed. So this one, it's it doesn't feel good in the left hand. Or the right hand. It's just, it's big, it's blocky. Kind of a big turd of a handle, to be honest <laughs> exactly with you. Exactly like holding on to like a, 
like a solidified turd, like a like put a turd in the freezer. Yeah. You smack down the handle. Uh, yeah, it's good. Perfect. Yeah, it's a it's a chunky boy, not in a good way. So, uh, yeah. I guess now we'll talk about why this guy's so dirty and why I kind of wanted to do a review on these. So, two weeks back, two weeks, two weeks back, we, Tim and I were actually, and your fiance, and my fiance. we're heading out to the woods <laughs> for a, a little cookout and we're in my pickup and uh, <laughs> I get stuck in the mud. It's been raining a lot and we're going down a logging road. So there's all kinds of mud and pine needles washed down to this one area. And the funny thing is, is you and me had been down it earlier. Yeah, we had, we had previously gone down a little earlier in the day. Yeah, like a couple hours. And it, no hadn't, it hadn't rained at all in like the two hours since we've been out there. Exactly. So we go out this time and what happens? I get stuck. Like bad stuck. And if I've got any picture, I know I know your fiance took some videos. You should notice that like on the video, your tailgate looks dirtier than normal. <laughs> it, it, it was it was messy. It, it was bad. It was a bad deal. <laughs> so, anyways, my dad happened to be in the area, and we called him. <laughs> and he came pull us out. And long story short, there was a root under my wheel. My mud flap was caught against that root, and so my wheel was just spinning against that mud flap. So my dad said, "Hey, do you have anything that you can cut this out with?" And, you know, we, we like to compare knives and guns and talk about stuff when we hang out. And so I had a big box of knives in the back of my truck. And this happened to be there. So my dad grabs it, and he goes to saw on that root. And by gosh, he got it out. Yep, and that, that, yeah. All the dirt, rocks, hard root right there next to that, that wheel. And it was able to get that root out of the way. Yeah. It, and there's no deformation on the blade, the teeth. Not even the gut hook has any kind of chipping. No, it held up really, really well. And even though the handle was wet, it still yeah. was grippy. And I actually left the knife dirty for two weeks just to see if it'd get any rust. And I haven't cleaned it off yet. We'll do that here in a little bit, I guess. But um, as far as I can tell, it doesn't look like there's much rust. So I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> um, Good old knives. Yeah, how about we do some testing? I know I have some footage from of you using yours to slice some water bottles, <laughs> so I'll put I'll put that in somewhere. Let me know. Whenever you're ready, bud. Yeah, ready. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Looks like I just committed murder. Go down on it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Along <laughs> with the uh, my War Tech, I was also in there. Yeah, and the War Tech, he had a War Tech he was slicing. I'll throw that in too, just for the heck of it. No promises. Daisy, daisy. That's one. It's gonna be the real. Atta boy! <laughs> I think the Russian crime boss is probably hired you to hack people up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's cool. That's a nice knife. Maybe put it through some slow motion. Should have brought that one today. Should have nice. brought that one today. Because that one, that one has the uh, strap for behind the leg. has a buckle. Yeah, it does. You know what? I'll put in a picture of the knife that we're talking about. I'll look up a picture and put it in. But uh, for now, I guess let's do some testing. Testing time. All right. We'll do, I don't know, you think five hits? Yeah. I like slap. I like slap. See how far it bites? Yeah. Start right here. Yes, first we'll start off with a durability test. We'll start five and we'll switch over and do five more. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if our branch will still. If the branch will hold still. All right. Well, you can tell there's. 
no chipping, no rolling. Still about as sharp as when we first started with it. All right. All right. Now let's. let's yeah, I'm making you do the testing because I'm sick and tired of always being behind the camera. Sure. I'm sure you. No more of my beautiful hands. Just your beautiful everything. Ah, <laughs> oh, shucks. All right, let's try the big boy. Move down a little. We'll go right here. All right. Stay still. <laughs> Safety first, guys. So, yeah, this one's definitely much more of a chopper. Uh, yeah. This thing digs in way more, and then as you can tell, no rolling, no chipping, still as sharp as uh, the day I bought it. <laughs> nice. I think it's, uh, this thing's good. Well, do you want to test the saw? Yeah, let's test the saw on this big boy. So let's see. I'll hold it on this side. <laughs> <laughs> do a few strokes. <laughs> That digs in pretty well, and it's smooth. It slides in and out pretty easy. Yeah. Damn your wallet. So, uh, should we grab the crap bar? Let's let me do the little one first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and ahead. We'll grab the turn yeah, stick. We, the turn stick. <laughs> Instead of a K bar, it's a crap bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's her handle. <laughs> All right. Now let's try the little one. Definitely not as smooth. Not as smooth, but definitely the uh, the pull is smoother than the push for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, well, for a little knife like this, you know, for being little and what did we say earlier about four, five years old? Yeah, something like that. For just being the first model they made, it is still a very durable and, as you can tell, effective knife in outdoor situations. Well, and. I mean, obviously, the last ditch kind of thing. It's not going to be your first choice for chopping something down. No. No. Look, you, should we try the little one? You want to? Might as well try like a tip test. Yeah, go for it. You know, just to see Since the other ones don't really have tips at yeah, all. <laughs> they don't. They got like that samurai tanto kind I of I mean, that, that, that's one thing. You don't have to worry about breaking your tip off because there is no tip to break off. True. So we'll try the, uh, just a little old baby Camilla's knife. Maybe we'll do a little bit of some, see how good. I mean, it's you know, decently sharp. You know, just a little pressure kind of helps, but what we really want to see is, that's, that's pretty good. Like, it goes in quite a bit and no popping, no breaking. It's still pretty good. All right. Pretty nice. I like that. All right. Crap bar. I'll grab the crap bar. Well, Heard. <laughs> we'll go down. We'll start right here. Go for it. We'll do about the same we were doing on those other ones. So it's so there's from the so this side it swings pretty good, but this side not quite as smooth and that's something you were telling me beforehand yeah talk about that yeah and i think it has to do with the uh the blade geometry on this side it's more straight like it just comes kind of straight up and on this side it curves a little more in towards so that kind of helps when you're coming down it gets that nice chop and this one just kind of hits and glances Slut, off yeah yeah Half the knife is pretty good. Half the knife is pretty good. Other half, yeah, so much. Well, let's try the real other half, the combo edge. Let's try those. Uh, how how the handle feel while you were chopping? Uncomfortable. That last hit actually it rolled. Yeah, that yeah, I kind of figured. Hit. Even though it has that little finger groove, yeah, it don't stop it from uh, spinning. Mm -mm. Well, let's try uh, some oh, sharp two saw over here. It's only half. Uh, just, just the one direction. Oh, here's what's Oh, no. <laughs> that ain't smooth. No, that gets a uh, get four out of ten. <laughs> that gets stuck. <laughs> and then plus how it just comes from teeth to straight blade. 
you lose all that traction. So you're coming with that tension, you hit that straight way, and your arm just kind of shoots back. Yeah. That's not going to end. <laughs> you kind of cut and then come across and... No. And, and, and when it comes to, uh, to, to sawing wood, he's a guy I trust because he used to be a lumberjack for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this thing uh, couldn't cut down a tree. Mm -mm. Those other ones, like if you look at the difference just alone in the... Uh, well, smaller one. Yeah, like small, big one. Then you look at the the saw. Yeah, you got these two, decent. You have. Well, let me grab one of the. Uh, so if you look at, like just the just the teeth itself, they're bigger, and they got more gaps. So it allows for all the sawdust a way to go out, and it allows for a bigger cut. So you're not going to get stuck as much. Now, if you come over here, where this one was cutting at, you see. Like the difference is night and day. You have huge and small. And all these teeth are in the same direction. Our video stopped, so please continue with your point. <laughs> all right, as I was talking. So we we're talking about the saws, and I noticed that where your teeth are here on the saw is quite a bit narrow compared to the spine of yeah, your... Yeah, because it's on the grind. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being on the spine, like these teeth are, which is already the thickness of the blade. So you're not gonna have any kind of hangups. Mm -hmm. So you can just keep cruising through because it's all even, it's all completely the same. As on this one, you'll hit a point to where your teeth aren't thicker than your blade, so you're gonna stop. Right. And you're gonna get stuck, and that's only about, what, about? Like a quarter of an a inch. Quarter of an inch. I mean, just the grinds on them as it is, or about a quarter of an inch difference. Yeah. As it is. And then moving on to like the gut hooks. There you can tell there's a clear difference. Typical gut hook. Sharpened. You know, to a point. And then you have this one. Oversized. Like there's no sharp in there at all. It's basically just a hook on the tip of your blade. That's all it is. But it's just... I mean... When you pay for the Camillus, you're literally paying for better quality material. Yeah. And see, the, the, this goes to show, you know, like, like I wouldn't say the Camillus is the ultimate survival knife. It's not the no. ultimate, the best thing money can buy, but honestly... It's it's well, good for what it is. It's, for it's good for what it is for the price. I think we were talking 30 to 40 bucks. 30 to 40 bucks compared to like 10. 10. <laughs> and so, you know, if, if you're trying to put together like a, a survival kit, a prepping bag or something... Yeah. And you're on a budget. And you're on a budget. Don't go super budget. Yeah, don't go, like, cheapest thing you can find. Like, don't go yeah. buying some $5 machete from Walmart. Right? Probably not the best idea to go. I have done that. I, I know. And we know how that turned out. Broken. Yep. <laughs> Plastic handles aren't good for machetes. <laughs> Found that out the hard way. But, yeah. The Camillus Carnivore is just... It's a good knife all around. I mean, like I said, it's... May not be the best for survival, but it definitely beats out this no name brand. I guess we can go with the, the crap bar, hand, the crap bar with the turd <laughs> handle. I mean, yeah, as you can tell, just the size of the handles. Yeah, well, another thing, too, <laughs> the uh, I mean, the the crap bar is more crowbar like, more crowbar like, but it has like a thinner blade almost than the Camillus, but it weighs a ton. Yes, this weighs more than this. But the blade is just a little bit thinner. Yeah, it might be just a little thinner. It's hard to maybe show because it's that, flat. Maybe they took all that weight out when they made the actual, the real you know, saw teeth. Yeah, that's actually a good point. And they have that steeper belt, that grind is a little bit deeper, a little that, deeper than yeah, this one. This one is steel. just a hunk of metal they decided to put an edge on. Yep. some crappy teeth. And you know the worst thing? I have two of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, made you buy them. One is fine. Two, and you're a little crazy. <laughs> Two of these now. Which you have. Yes. That just makes you pro. Mm. Well, <laughs> should we clean up my dirty one and then give our final impressions? Sounds about good enough to me. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right, let's clean them up. Bottled water. This is not going to be a complete cleanup. We're just going to wipe some of the dirt off and see if we find any rust. Just to kind of inspect the blade. Yeah. Yeah, Ron, it could be rusted with water. 
<laughs> it feels like the water touches it. Just, it just, it just corrodes. completely corrodes. Falls apart. <laughs> just falls off. That was one way to do it. One way to do it. Oh, look at that. As far as I can tell, ain't no rust. Ain't no rust. Thirsty. Well, it's a little warm. It's for in the shade. All right, so. Final conclusions. Honestly, well, I'll bring this up first. There is another version of this that we don't have. It's like a not Tanto yet. version. Not, not yet. <laughs> it's like a Tanto <laughs> version. So it has a point. And we didn't really talk about the, the the chisel tip on these because honestly, I would kind of prefer like for a survival situation to have a point. Yeah, just to just to kind of complete it, just in case you have to stab something. Yeah, exactly. And this. Is more of a pry tool, but I mean, let's bring out, let's bring out the SRK. I am going to be doing a review on this. It hasn't come out yet, but I carry this knife at work. Beat the crap out of it. I use this knife to chop, even though it's not really a chopper, and it has a point that, you know, very stabby stab. It's pretty sturdy <laughs> and still stabby. Yeah. Well, a cold steel does know how to make good knives. Mm -hmm. Give him that. So, my, my my biggest feelings on this knife are. I think this would be a great knife for people to have, like, um, in their like, like in their garage for like yard work. Yeah, just like a, just a good all-around knife to have. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like a yard work. That's knife. not gonna break the bank if you buy one. Exactly, and if you break it, you can get another one. Yeah, but if you break that, then. Yeah, if you break, yeah, I, I will say <laughs> that's a sturdy knife. I mean, it withstood rocks, dirt, back of a truck, and back of a truck. <laughs> They're. Camus does make some pretty hardcore knives. That's yeah, that's for sure. Well, the thing about Camillus is, I'm rooting for him, and I hope I hope they they really do. In fact, this video is going to be going in a play in a playlist that I have about Camillus knives. Check those out. Nothing that's super fancy, but I'm rooting for him. And I hope they start you know kind of really really moving up. So improvements. Honestly, I think this would be a really awesome knife in 1095 steel. Yeah, it would be. That would be a really nice knife. Uh, the sheath, I think, could be better. I'm not a big fan of the sheath. Yeah, I, th I think, to be honest, I kind of... I kind of like the older. I mean, if it was just a little more tight... Yeah. Then I think... Because I do like how they made... To where you could take off the little one. Yeah. I, I honestly like that little feature because it even has a little belt loop. You know, you can slide your belt through and carry yeah. it separately if you wanted. I like that little feature, to be yeah, honest. I, I would like to be able to take that off and carry it separately. I mean, yeah, it's cool that it's attached to the knife. One thing about the sheet that I didn't mention, actually, is the belt loop. So you have this big, huge thing here, but this is the only part that your belt can go through, is this little bit up here. Yeah. The rest like of this is sewn shut. The yeah. little one, it is all of this back here can fit. So you have... Well, you say twice the room <laughs> easily twice easily twice the room and it's thicker yeah and it is thicker i think this sheath if they were to make a kydex sheath that had multiple like honestly i'll be honest if i was going to be carrying this knife because i really don't carry this knife on my belt uh, this is more something that I, like it's more when you keep in your truck i keep it I, in fact this knife lives in my truck this stays in my truck just as a just in case exactly but if this knife had like a a Kydex sheet that yeah, had multiple make positions. It, make it towards not so bulky up here towards, you know, the yeah. guard. And then, you know, I put might, a little string or something on there. Might scout carry it. Yeah, carry it on the back and walk around with it. On the back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really feel cool like that. Just yeah, that's two right. of them. <laughs> Probably a little samurai sword. But. Yeah. There yeah, you go. We, <laughs> just put them both on the back. <laughs> See? Works just fine. But I think for... For what it is, it is nice. Like I said, if they made a bigger version of this, but a little tighter, yeah, I think it could be a lot better. Cause this, I mean, for one, I think it just looks better. Yeah, that's just me. Like the hard look. I mean, it just. Well, one I thing I'll know. say about the little one, actually, that I forgot to mention is, um, I like the ergos on the little one a whole lot. Yeah, it, it's, even though it has a more plasticky handle, it's more to fit to your hand. Yeah, because the big one, maybe it's just I have small hands. Yeah, I mean, because if you look at like, 
it'll fit in your hand fine. It's just you're a little more spread. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Your fingers can fit in the grooves. I know you can get that that whack, but like you got this space here, you got a little space back here. As on like a little one, where you don't really have that kind of room to play. Like it's yeah, just left it. I like have, the size you have of that a one. little bit and a little down here, but you have like no room to play. It's not gonna rock out of your hand. It's not gonna fly uh, fly away from you unless you just not don't have a hold of it. Then so I think overall, what I think about these knives are. They're really freaking cool, and they're Very worth nice. having just because of the cool factor. <laughs> and if you cool have to, to use at. them, you can. They they can be used. I'm not sure they're the best thing at any category, but they're pretty good in a bunch of different categories. They have. But they're not the worst in their category. They're not the worst in any category either. I mean, yeah. Compared to the crap bar. Yeah, which ergos are trash, 300% garbage. To do the other one too. Get that other one out of your truck. <laughs> <laughs> and like, as we were talking about the handles before, obviously, bigger, smaller. The smaller one just feels better in the hand. Yeah. I mean, you can get on it tighter. You're not worried about it flying out. The big one, it's a little bulky, but I can still get my hand around it. Yeah. It's just not. Well, it's got some decent contouring and shaping and yeah, grip. I mean, that's what makes it better. But like I said, like when you actually feel where the the holes, you know, like the lines are for your fingers, you're still back a little ways. Yeah. You know, you still have about an inch gap on either end, really. Mm -hmm. But you can still get around it. I mean, I can almost, I can touch my thumb all the way around. So, I mean, there's plenty to work with. But like on the little one. It keeps cutting you off in the middle of your great speeches. I know. It's so <laughs> messed up. <laughs> kind of forgot where I was. Handle. Yeah. Handles. Handles. Anyway, so yeah, like, going back to the handles, you kind of look, when you grip them, you know, there's a there's a bit of difference. My fingers, they touch my thumb quite a bit. I can reach over. This knife is good for, you know, smaller hands, bigger hands. It works out pretty good. I don't like the bigger hand, the bigger handle. It's, that's a little more bulky, but, I mean, you, you still got the same blade thickness you just got a smaller handle that's pretty much all you're sacrificing really is the length of blade mm -hmm. i mean if they had maybe a bigger size with the texture or the handle material they used on the big one but about the same size as the small one right i think you'd have a, a really good knife well and something too the, the tanto version that i was talking about maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to get some of those and we can do a part two to this video see how yeah, the tanto ones stack up but i think i've only seen the tanto in this size and I think the Tonto would be really nice in the smaller if size. If the Tonto, if they made like a variation of they did of this one, mm -hmm. oh, we, haven't, we haven't even talked about the uh, the middle the version between these two. Yeah, I haven't actually ever handled one of those. I have neither, but I've I've wanted one. And it was, the blade was what, longer than these? It was about like that. I think so. I can't remember. It was longer. It had that camouflage handle, that like gray camouflage handle. Yeah. And it was a little longer, but it had the straight edge on the back with the gut hook, I think. So it didn't have the saw, but it was a little longer, and it had basically like the same handle as this, just on a bigger, longer blade with a straight back. But I don't think I've seen those around very much lately. I, I remember seeing them like, they should be around a lot, but then they just kind of, like this, stopped. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, can you buy those ones anymore? I haven't seen them. I will do some research, and I'll leave some text right here on if you can buy those. Because, you yeah, the good, the big one's nice. I mean, you got a little, this one is, I think this is good for chopping. Yeah. This is a chopper. This one is, you know, it's good for chopping, but it's good for yeah, smaller, and, more delicate yeah, tasks and that's you might what, have. That's what I was kind of thinking with the whole tip thing. Chopper, this one, I, I would prefer this one to have maybe even a, a little bit of a higher grind, so it's a little bit slicier, yeah. and a tip. Yeah, yeah. Add the tip, the more steep grind. Right. Because perfect knife. Like perfect. Well, for what it is. If we're taking it as like a, a survival knife type deal, I think a a, a point. Yeah, and it's would, would be more useful than a, a chisel and in it, this size. Yeah, like if it's a survival knife, you have say you you make your survival bag, that's not going to take up as much space as this will. Exactly. Exactly. So that you can sh just shove it in the back of your backpack and have plenty of room to stuff stuff. If 
You can use like even a smaller backpack for that would work. I mean, maybe in some fanny packs, you never know. Some fanny packs can be pretty big, but. You know, one thing I haven't talked about is how on the handles here they go up. Yeah, they, they flare for your thumb. Like, and Which, you put your thumb there and also keep your hand from sliding up. Yeah, so when you're going to, for one, like all those finger grooves, you see them like they're perfect. So when you go, your hand just fits. So it's not going to try and wiggle out. Even if it does, you're still going to hit that backstop. So you're not going to lose yeah. control and just fling yeah. it. And if you hit something with it, your hand's not going to shoot up onto the blade because you got that nice little stop right there. Well, and that's another thing too. You have this dull area here that if you need to, I think it works a little bit better on the big one. You can actually put your finger yeah, there. Yeah, you can, you can choke up on it a little more. Yeah. You just pop that over there. One thing, and you can see a little bit on this guy, is it's going to make sharpening a little more difficult. You might, if you're going to get one of these, I'll show on this one. You can see the edge gets a little wavy back there. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, little, little get, getting a little bit of a smile. So just cut, like maybe cut a, yeah, a sharpening foil in. Even the big one, as you can tell, even the big one, it kind of has that little, a little smile on it too. It must just be a manufacturer thing that they yeah, well haven't figured out yet. Well, it's it's just a result of not having sharpening foil. So. Yeah, and it's it's not a big deal. I mean, as we see in the sharpness test, it still works just fine. I mean, for being big, bulky blades, they're pretty sharp. Yeah, and as we can tell, just from that to this, they have upgraded quite a bit, handle material wise, and uh, they found their edge. <laughs> That's for sure. I agree. Well. That, that's something. Camille, Cam Camille's does Camille, 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 Camille. That was a stripper from Vegas. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a long night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Camillus, they have this. They, they they do this thing with their steel called titanium bonding. I don't know what that is. If it's a type of heat treat or if they <laughs> just use it to sell. I don't know. Or if they just use it to sell. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll do some research on that. And if we do a part two to this video with the Tanto, yeah, then we'll go more in detail. We'll have more information. Yeah, I like that. That sounds, that sounds good. And as we noticed on the your Carnivore X, they don't rest very easy. Yeah, and see, that's one thing. You like, know, we were talking about how it'd be cool if these had 1095 steel. So 1095 is a carbon steel, which means it's it's not stainless. If these are 440, you know, the edge retention is not going to be the best. Which on an impact chopper you don't really yeah miss. you're not you're not looking for keeping an edge on something you're gonna whack a bunch yeah. of times on this one you might want a little bit of edge keeping yeah, but the, the smaller one yeah I mean I, I do think the smaller one's blade needs a little bit of a rework because this is more of a chopper blade yeah it's it just needs like you said that that tonto edge more of that defined slanted grind would be right. that steeper grind would be nicer right but yeah keep the teeth on the back because you know yeah. you never know when you're gonna need it yeah. And the thing about 440 is it will not rust. No. It, um, is, it, is, it is good steel. Stainless steel isn't as tough as carbon steel, but these seem to be okay. You know, they didn't roll. No, they chip. didn't roll, didn't chip. On mine that got sawed into the mud and rocks and stuff, the teeth didn't take yeah. a significant All the rocks, damage. none of the rocks, are, like even if it did hit rocks, yeah. you can't tell. Exactly. It looks just fine. Like It looks exactly like mine does. I mean, mine, mine sits in a box most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're, they're good knives all around. Like you said, if they had a tip, well, it'd be nicer, but... So, so that's the big question. Are they recommendable? I think yes. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, if you got the money and you're looking for a good, durable knife that's not crazy expensive, yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, go, go right ahead. Have at it, because these are... I think... I, I, these are fun knives. Yes. Th th these are fun knives. That's these the word fun we've been looking for. They're fun. Fun and affordable. They're just All the others are perfect. <laughs> lanyard hole. Yeah, lanyard hole. That. I mean, heck, if you really want to bonk someone on the head, you got a perfect <laughs> little, <laughs> got a little... little cracker right there. <laughs> cracker. A little cracker. <laughs> well, didn't you say, well, I guess if we get the tonsils, we'll find out for sure how they stow the little knife. Yeah, yeah. Well, another thing we were trying to find out too. We, we can't talk too much about the Tantos because we don't have them, obviously, but if we get a hold of some, hopefully in the future. there'll be a part two to this video. Hopefully in the future, we'll get our hands on a few. And then we'll uh, come back to these and kind of compare again with the Tonto and see what we can get. So do you have anything else to say about these? 
I think we've just about covered everything, you know, it's for what it is, yeah, it's a good knife, I mean, for budget shoppers, yeah, it's, no, yeah, budget choppers, that's exactly what it is, it's a budget chopper that is, the big one is really good for chopping, the smaller one, good for chopping as we seen on the, yeah, on our branch over there. Might be better as a more multi-purpose thing, but, yeah, overall cool knives, and, Good yeah. quality, good, well made. If sure. you're into, if you're into the way they look, definitely check. Them definitely out. check them out. So, recommend for sure. That's all I've got. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for <laughs> watching this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll probably have Austin back in a future installment at some point. Oh yeah, for sure. Exactly. I got my own box of knives. We gotta go. He's through. got his own box of knives. We. We got a lot of stuff we can I do. Got, I got a few stores, you know, we might have to bring to the ranch. Just, got a few stores. Just to look at if we need to. Cause, you know. he, he's more of the um, badass collector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go for stuff that's so crazy. I, I'm a little more of the EDC collector. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I've come to find that out, but you're more, you know. I'm more utilitarian. He's more, I'm going to chop your head off of my yeah, sword. Yeah, <laughs> more like fixed blade scary kind of, uh, kind of where I go with it. Exactly. As you've seen with the War Tech Hunter. I'll have to bring that one because uh, if, if you put that video on there, then I'm sure they'll find out that knife is pretty darn scary looking yeah. as it is. I mean, it's not huge, but it's scary looking. I'll have to bring that one down next time and the folder along with it. That's a plan. That is a plan. That will be next time I come down. I'll have to bring that. Until then, signing out. Yes, yeah, signing out. Have fun.